welcome to Pops and Hisses, a music podcast where we talk to bands you love, talk about concerts, and answer your burning music questions. I'm your host, Kevin Coffey, and in this episode, we have another installment of Ask the Music Guy. This time, we're talking about music venues, concerts, and more music venues. These are all listener-submitted questions. If you'd like to ask your own question, head to popsandhisses.com slash question and fill out the form. It's really easy just takes a second. You could be featured on a future episode of the show. So we're going to get to your questions really soon. But first, let's take a look at the news. So the Grammy nominations are out, and it's been a pretty exciting time with some really interesting music, but also some names that you might not actually recognize that well unless you're really diving into pop culture and radio and all kinds of stuff like that. So leading the nominations is John Batiste, who a lot of people might not recognize that name, but he came out with 11 nominations, some for his album We Are, and some for the soundtrack to the wonderful Pixar movie Soul. Who you, How you probably know Batiste best is as the leader of Stephen Colbert's house band. So a lot of other people cleared a ton of nominations. Justin Bieber, Doja Cat, and Her each uh, had eight nominations. And Billie Eilish and Olivia Rodrigo were close behind with seven. Interestingly, uh, Rodrigo is nominated in all four of the big categories. New Artist, Record, Album, and Song of the Year. So that is uh, huge for her. Little Nas X and Brandi Carlile each got five noms. While Bruno Mars and Anderson Pock's Silk Sonic got four. Uh, that is an awesome album, and I highly recommend you go check it out. What's interesting is they got nominated on the singles off that album. The album itself didn't come out until after this year's Grammy eligibility cutoff, so you'll actually probably see them back next year when they get nominated for some album awards. Also interesting is that Marilyn Manson and Louis C.K. got nominated, uh, despite both of them being publicly roasted for their bad behavior. Interestingly, the Recording Academy said... They look at the art and not the artist, so to speak. Uh, in an interview recently, CEO Harvey Mason Jr. said, We won't restrict the people who can submit their material for consideration. We won't look back at people's history. We won't look at their criminal record. We won't look at anything other than the legality within our rules of, Is this recording for this work eligible based on date and other criteria? If it is, they can submit for consideration. So yeah, that's interesting. Uh, you can basically do anything but still get nominated for a Grammy, and they apparently don't have any cutoff for that. Now... That's the Recording Academy's business, and they can do what they want, but kind of strange that you could go murder someone and then still get nominated for a Grammy, and they don't apparently care. So, uh, been some pushback for some of the statements on that stuff, and we'll see what happens between now and uh, when the Grammys happen late, uh, early next year. Uh, What's probably going to happen? Nothing. Other than those two people probably won't win awards. I highly doubt that Louis C.K. and Marilyn Manson walk home with any trophies. Also in the news, Travis Scott offered to cover funeral expenses for the folks that died as a result of the, I don't know how to say it, the tragedy that unfolded at his Astroworld Festival. But uh, in the news this week was that a family of a nine-year-old that died after attending the show uh, declined. They said no way. They weren't going to do it. So the family's lawyer wrote an eloquent statement, essentially saying he needs to take more responsibility and the organizers of the festival also need to take more responsibility. Both things, which I agree with wholeheartedly, also from a legal standpoint, uh, I imagine Scott will get rejected continually because nobody wants to see acceptance of that money for a funeral expense as acceptance of a settlement uh, that would mitigate his legal responsibility. I have to imagine he and festival organizers are going to get sued many, many times over and nobody wants to, uh, you know, settle that before it's time to. And honestly, I expect a lot more of this to come. Both Scott and concert organizers, uh, are going to continue to receive scrutiny. Also on the last episode of ask the music guy, we talked about what music venues can do to become more attractive. I put the question on Twitter after that episode came out and I got a ton of responses. So, People had some really good ideas. I really dug a lot of these. Um, Linda, uh, at Linda in Chicago, wrote, Provided more thoughtful viewing experiences. So many square boxes with flat floors selling beers and squishing in as many people as possible. Yeah, uh, so many places are, well, this used to be a strip mall, but we put a 
a uh, music venue in here. This used to be a bar, but we turned it into a music venue. And, uh, you know, this used to be something, a restaurant, and now it's a music venue. Or this is a bar, and we decided to host live music. So most of these are square places meant to fit a lot of people and sell you a lot of beer. Um, and very few of them are constructed to highlight your viewing experiences. Uh, those that are, are awesome. Uh, I recently went to a show here in Omaha at Slowdown. Uh, Slowdown was built from the ground up to be a music venue. There's a pit area. There's a balcony area. There is a uh, second mezzanine tier with seats that go around the top of the pit area. So there's multiple spots in the venue from which to view. It's a really great viewing experience from my standpoint. Um, but yeah, that, that was a really good one from Linda. Uh, better sight lines. This is from Bentley's Pop on Twitter. Better sight lines, better audio quality, better and cheaper craft beer options, and more event-specific knowledgeable staff. Well, uh, yeah, I could see those. A lot, a lot of venues around here, at least, have great audio, but, you know, we've all been to that venue that they bought the cheapest PA that they could. It barely functions, and everything sounds like crap. Um you know, craft beer options would be a great one. A lot of a lot of bars in general have more craft beer, which is really great. And I, I get more event specific knowledgeable staff. And most of the places are hiring a staff to work every night, more so than maybe, um, you know, we have the metal staff for metal night and the indie rock staff for indie rock night. But you know, I'm sure they're doing their best. I get that one though. Uh, <laughs> Tim Trudell wrote, "Require proof of vaccination and ID cards." That's not obviously industry wide, but happening in a lot of places. The last concert I went to, I had to show my vaccination card to get in. Uh, yeah, same. Maggie Bergman wrote, "Require proof of vaccine, negative test." Uh, this is a good one that I appreciated. Uh, April D. Holt wrote, "Have meet and greet opportunities for fans and artists." Now, that's not really on the venue. Um, that's usually the the artist or promoter. You know, the artist or the, I shouldn't say the promoter. That's usually on the artist or their booking agent doing meet and greets. Um, I always appreciate at a small rock club kind of show when, you know, sometimes they have paid meet and greet, and that's usually a, f- a formal photo, a hangout, an autograph. Maybe the hangout's 30 seconds, but those are always nice. I also appreciate those small venues when the artist finishes and says, hey, we're going to be at the, at the merch booth for a little while. Come by and say hello. Uh, those are always really cool. Um, Dan Golden wrote more seats for introverts. I hear that. That sounds really cool. Um, if you're a person who wants to sit, I get it. Uh, that's harder at like club shows because, you know, you have to have a place for people to sit. Uh, example, the venue is at last slowdown has a balcony and that's really nice, but those are hard seats to come by. Um, unless you buy them in advance, but I get that. Uh, Mark Manor writes, I'd like to see music venues less attractive, to be honest. And I know Mark and I know he uh, attended shows in an era of dingy music venues. I couldn't disagree (laughs) more. I I love attractive music venues that are nice, pleasant experiences. I like that the bathroom doesn't reek when you go in there or is a disgusting, you know, filthy place. Like, I don't mind somewhere that's old. Or that's lived in, but you know, please at least keep them clean. <laughs> that's that would be my preference. Um, more bathrooms. That's a really good one. Uh, and, and this is another one. Justin Justin Geis, who's Buskets and Gravy on Twitter, said clean bathrooms and also slanted floors, which sounds super uncomfortable to me. But he was talking about you know a slight slant. So and this kind of goes back to seating and sight lines. If you stand in the back, you're slightly higher than the people in front of you, and you can see a little better. And then uh, last, Sean Hagawood, who's S Hagawood UNL on Twitter, said all venues should have those baggies that lock your phone when you're in the concert hall. Can't stand it when people have their phones up constantly, usually recording video. Uh, the Silver Sun pickup show I was at, there was a guy two ish rows in front of me who had his phone out recording the band the entire time. I guarantee this guy never watched those videos ever again. They're just taking up space on his phone. I I don't love the idea of every concert taking away your phone. Um, I say this as like a parent who would like to be contacted in case of emergency. And I don't want to go back checking my phone out of the locker uh, every hour. But uh, I do wish there was a don't take your phone out of your damn pocket thing. I've seen that at a lot of venues and I've seen it enforced. Um, Bands don't want flash photography taken of them. They don't want crappy video. Uh, bands like Jack White, who who actually did the zip your baggy thing up, zip, zip your phone in a baggy thing, uh, also provides a tour photographer and says, hey, 
all our photos are available at our website in high res. You want them, you want to post them on social media, you want to print them out at home, you do whatever you want with them. They're yours. Keep your phone in your pocket. You're not going to get any better video than we would have, uh, any better photo than we would have. So all good suggestions, everybody. I would love to hear more if you've got them. All right, we're back with another edition of Ask the Music Guy. And on this episode, we've got two questions. The first comes from Scott Carollo, who submitted a question on popsandhisses.com. Be like Scott, submit your question at popsandhisses.com slash question. But here it comes from Scott. We've been fortunate to improve our access to numerous artists coming to town thanks to so many great venues. As you know, we have even more music shops in the works, some new, some being refurbished. What's your prediction for the types of shows, bands, and artists we might now get access to these establishments coming to fruition? That's a great question, Scott. And you can follow Scott on Twitter at SCCMD13. Now, Scott is talking about Omaha where I live, and it is true. You might not think of Omaha as being such a great place for music, but it is. Speaking of music venues, there's a 17,000-seat arena here. There's a few smaller arenas, multiple large theaters, multiple outdoor amphitheaters, several high-quality rock clubs, and tons of bars. Uh, There's also multiple music festivals. But currently under construction, in addition to all of that, is a 3,000-person general admission downtown concert venue, a 2,500-seat hybrid indoor-outdoor club and amphitheater, uh, a massive downtown park with a stage and a big band shell, and... Uh, currently undergoing renovation is one of the city's oldest venues, a 1500 cap hall. So that's a lot of venues, right? And it is. You're damn right it is. That's so many venues. It might even be too many. We will see when they all open. But these venues are being open for a specific reason. They're trying to get more concerts. So uh, again, Omaha, mid-sized city, we have somewhat of an outsized appetite for concerts. Um, there's tons of them here all the time. They're always well attended and venues can book them and make money doing them venues and promoters. Um, but they know they can book more. There's lots of artists they would love to have and are not able to have because they don't have the right venue. So, um, Omaha mostly has everything, but what it's missing is a lot of those mid-sized venues for artists that are kind of between a club and an arena. There's some, uh, but most of the outdoor amphitheaters are not really centrally located uh, in the city. And so they're either slightly out of town or, you know, way south of town or, or whatever, and the harder to get to. So some of the desire for that is to get these places in a more centrally located area. Um, or there's bands that, for example, like rock bands would love to play our beautiful downtown. There's two beautiful downtown theaters here they'd love to play those places except they have seats in them and like um you know slayer doesn't want to play the the beautiful ornate 100 year old theater with these gorgeous plush red seats they want an open ga venue so uh one of the venues that's being built is a 3000 person ga venue and that's for rock bands and other bands that want to play that size place and don't really have another place to do it um also bands like to play venues that they fit in so they you know arenas can always do like a half house right they put a curtain in the middle of the venue they put the stage on one end and you you play to half the arena except that's not very exciting it's also a pain that's a lot of pre-production work and staging and curtains and stuff that has to be installed and that costs money and everything else uh but you know bands like to sell places out they like to fit in the venue that they're going to play. If it's a thousand people, they like to put 900 to a thousand in it. Um, you know, it gives the performance energy for sure. Partly it's about the performance, right? But it also gives the band buzz for having sold out. Hey, we sold out 10 dates on our last tour. Could they have played larger places? Possibly, but they could have played half empty larger places and that's not as fun. So it's exciting to play in a packed room. It, it for just the performance itself, but also marketing, but it's not as exciting to play in a half filled room. So what are we going to get now? Uh, What can a city like Omaha or really any city expect with these kinds of venues or a variety of venues? I would say the answer is anything and everything. Um, We're lucky here. We get tons of huge country artists come to the arena of classic, classic artists like James Taylor and Jackson Brown and the Eagles and whatever. Uh, But, you know, up and coming pop stuff like Billie Eilish comes and, you know, we can get every big tour that's coming around in those medium sized tours. Those bands that played the thousand seat hall last time can come through and play the 2000 seat venue next time once those are built, of course. So that's really what it does is it opens up options. 
uh, some of those mid-sized rock bands. Maybe a band that used to play arenas and doesn't anymore, but they're still popular. Um, I'm thinking a band like uh, a perfect example is 311, who's been on this podcast uh, before. They play consistently play fairly large venues, but they don't usually play 17,000 seat arenas, and that's totally fine. But um, you know, they need a place to play. That's maybe it's outdoors, maybe it's indoors. Um, but you know, they need a place of a certain size, and they don't want to just pack in the lower bowl of a larger room. You know, they want to play a place that they fit, and so. You can get all kinds of bands, up and coming bands. The way I've heard it said is uh, bands on the way up and bands on the way down. And both are just as good. Uh, But I think you'll begin to see a lot more of those. And if you're in a city like ours, you're probably already seeing that stuff. Um, If you have all those venues, if you're in a city that doesn't have that many venues, um, I don't know what advice I have to give you other than find people with money and ask them to build you a music venue. Uh, But seriously, you could speak to your city leaders a lot of the large venues in our city were constructed with private dollars, a lot of donations and stuff. Um, so, you know, speaking to your city leaders, literally speaking to people with money and the means to do it is an important step. Uh, arts groups and arts leaders, the the large performing arts group uh, here is who's built some of the bigger v- venues and has been very successful at it. And so just encouraging them, hey, we want to we're an audience of that wants to see these groups and we need this venue to be able to see them. What can we do to get this done in our city? I think those are really big, important steps. Real quick. I want to talk to you about this very podcast pops and hisses and our website pops and hisses.com. The podcast is coming at you weekly. Keep an eye on your favorite podcast service on Tuesdays, which is our planned release day. Sometimes we'll come out on Wednesdays. But we're shooting for Tuesdays every week. And follow me on Twitter at Omaha Music Guy for updates in case we take a week off. On that note, don't expect a new episode. The week between Christmas and New Year's uh, will be off that week. Please just enjoy the holiday time or the winter time. Or, you know, if you're not doing anything or off work, just the silence. Enjoy it. Do as best you can. But you can find all that stuff, podcast episodes, news, all kinds of good things on popsandhisses.com and subscribe to the Pops and Hisses podcast on your favorite podcast. All right, on to our second question. We got a variety of the same kind of question and they were all something like, when will my favorite band be coming to town? Why does my favorite band always skip coming here? How do I get this band to come to town? Uh, And this was from a variety of people on Twitter and I kind of lumped them all together uh, and here's the reason questions like, uh, when is band of horses coming back on tour? were more like people looking to me for inside information or wondering if I hadn't heard anything. Uh, and I got several of those sorts of things, but there's a really good question in there. So how do you find out about these shows? Uh, what if my favorite band or, or a band I really like, or somebody I just want to see is, is out on tour, but they just I never seem to come to my city. So uh, let's start here. It's always good to follow your favorite bands and local venues directly like their Facebook pages, follow them on Twitter. Um, you know, su- subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, you'll get the updates directly from those sources. Those are the best sources, the venues and the artists themselves, and you'll get them before you see them anywhere else. The venue and the band, almost always the first people to announce it. Uh, the bands, by the way, are who controls the announcement. So if you follow your favorite band on Instagram, I guarantee you they will put up a, um, a tour announcement. The, the second it is public information because they're the ones who control when that stuff gets released. So, uh, I, when I used to compile concert calendar, at my old job, I didn't have inside information. I simply went to websites and social media pages and other calendars and I compiled all this stuff. So you have lots of information of who's coming to town and when, if you just follow those things and, uh, pay attention. Also check out your local, uh, media outlet, newspaper, whatever. They probably have a calendar. Uh, hopefully they have a dedicated person filling that stuff out, but, um, they are also a good source of information. Um, also a good bet that when a band releases an album, they're going to go on tour after sometimes before. So keep an eye on their calendar, uh, pay attention to their news releases. Hey, we're making an album. This is what's going on. If you think, Oh, uh, the hold steady is putting out an album in October. Well, bet on them being in a, on tour in October. Um, maybe the month before, maybe a few months after, and, you know, maybe for the following year, they'll do several tours. So, you know, especially if you're trying to plan out your own personal calendar or your uh, ticket buying budget, that's never a bad idea. So 
onto that thing, you want your favorite band to come to town. There's a few things you're going to do. Um, you can do to help make that happen as you're a private music loving citizen. Now I'm going to advocate one thing here. Be really kind to the people that you talk to. Uh, this is their job. You don't want to bother them, inundate them with messages or, uh, harass them in any way. They're trying to do their best. And chances are, if there's a band that people like, they are also trying to get them to town because that's their job. That's what they want to do. So my advice is essentially reach out to the people that can get the band to town. And I don't mean comment, come to Cleveland every time the band makes a post on Facebook. Everybody does that all the time. It drives me nuts. The band is not reading those. They don't care. That's not how they figure out where their next tour is. I can't wait for you to come to Indiana. Yeah, I'm sure they can't either. But like they're not aggregating the stuff on Facebook comments and figuring out where to route the band. Um, They may use stuff like checking out their uh, demographic data from their fans on Facebook and saying, Hey, we have a ton of fans in this place. So let's route a tour stop through there. Um, but you know, your comments are probably not weighing as much or really at all as you think they would. But, um, I mean, reach out to local venues, reach out to local promoters. You can try and reach out to the band for sure. But, uh, you know, you reach out to those local folks, let them know that this is somebody that you'd want to see. Like I said, be respectful, be nice. Um, you know, explain, I'm a fan. I'd love to see the Decemberists come back to town. And likely the venue or promoter knows this artist, knows they're probably going on tour, would love to book them too. Uh, you know, a lot of times it's a routing issue. Why didn't they come to town? Well, because the only day off that they have is uh, between uh, Denver and Albuquerque, and there's no chance that they can make it to Kansas City between those. I mean, that's nuts. So, and sometimes it's, well, the band has a day off. Well, the band needs a day off, not another show to play. So, um, you know, but reach out to those uh, local folks, become a friend, help out. Like I said, don't bother them, but, you know, tell them that we want to do this. Uh, A big thing that you can do is find a way to show that you can sell tickets. Is there a local fan group for the band? How many members are in the group? You need to convince these people that booking this group is a financial win. They are not running a venue for the good vibes, the good of the community. And that's all uh, positive for sure. But uh, they're trying to make a living. They're trying to pay their employees. Uh, This is these people's job. It's their business. If you can show them, hey, we can get people in the door. um, That's a better push for what you're trying to do. On that note, too, think about traveling, especially if you do have a fan group. Uh, the more people participate in a little road trip or, uh, whatever, uh, the cheaper you can travel. Can you, you know, are you friends with these people? Can you pack 10 people into a couple hotel rooms? Well, that makes it a lot less expensive for everybody. Figure out when the tour is happening. You can plan a little bit in advance. Uh, you can do some stuff like that. And last of all, just be patient. If you're in Chicago, like every band is going to tour through town, right? But if you're in a place like Omaha, like me or Lexington, Kentucky or Richmond, Virginia, you might not get every tour every time it might be every other tour or every other year so you know you just got to be patient um if you live in a fair in a medium or so city or larger you know eventually a band you like is going to come to town unless they're bands like uh, i'm trying to think radiohead or the rolling stones or whatever that only ever play la new york and chicago um obviously those you're just going to have to travel to but uh you know most artists Come to town eventually. You just got to give them some time. Thanks so much for your questions. Remember, you can submit your own question to be featured on a future podcast at popsandhisses.com slash question. I'm your host, Kevin Coffey, and you can follow me on Twitter as at Omaha Music Guy or find my page on Facebook by searching for my name, Kevin Coffey. Thank you to Herd At Media for producing the show as always. And you can find lots more of our podcasts at herdatmedia.com slash network, H-U-R-R-D-A-T media.com. Thanks for listening. See you next time. A Huda Media Production.